Hello and welcome to the Needle Creations Crochet Video Workshop. We're here to show you how to do some techniques along with some tips on how to create your crochet project. This segment is going to be on the crochet flamingo and the name is Petals. Most everything you need is in the kit. We have the instructions, fiber fill, we have our yarn, our plastic crochet hook, punch eyes and plastic needle. I suggest any of the yarn that doesn't already come ball that you need to roll it into a ball. It makes it much easier to work with. Additional items that you will need will be a pair of scissors. There's a great set of instructions. The skill level is listed as intermediate. Make sure that you understand your instructions before you begin and practice the stitches being used so that you don't become overwhelmed working on your project. Your kit will come with a 3.5 millimeter hook. It may be white, it may be blue. Many of us have our favorite hook, but we recommend you use the hook that comes with this kit to maintain gauge or the tension of your fabric so you won't run out of yarn. There's five different areas to a hook. The head, the throat or the neck, the shaft, the thumb rest, and then the handle. You can hold it like this, or you can hold it like this. The head of the hook is smaller and pointed so it makes it easy to go in, but your stitch should always be equal with the shaft part of your hook, and that also will help you with your gauge. Many crochet instructions will include a gauge. Check before you begin. Having the correct tension, which is how tight or loose you crochet, is important to your project coming out to the correct size and will ensure that you don't run out of yarn. You'll single crochet a swatch and you'll count the number of rows and stitches across to make sure that it matches what your instructions say. Also on your instructions, you're going to see your abbreviations. Make sure you understand each one, the colors of the yarn, the various stitches. If you have to repeat any instructions, you will see brackets, then your other abbreviations. Each instruction sheet will have great graphics on what stitches are used for this project. If you need a refresher to practice any of them, please check our crochet stitches video. So let's get started with our body. Okay, one of the things you're going to need since you're working in continuous rounds uh, are some markers to, to mark your rows. And I like to use an alternate color set those aside. Now we're going to begin with an adjustable loop. And the way I do this is hold it between your thumb, forefinger, wrap it around, cross over, pick up your hook, underneath that first one, pull through, and then come back around, and you've made a chain. Now let me show you how to do that one more time. Hold it, wrap it around. Underneath that first one, pull through and then come back around and you have a chain. Now we're going to work six single crochet in this loop. And then you pull the end to tighten and that will close your opening. Now here's where I place my marker because we're going to work in a continuous round and we're going to begin with increases. So we have six stitches, we're going to increase in each stitch, that's two single crochet in each stitch, so we'll have 12 at the end of round two. So that's the first increase. Second.
Now we've completed round two. We've come around to where our marker is. Count your stitches each round to make sure you're increasing properly. So let's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's our twelve. Move the marker up. Then we're going to increase in the first stitch to single crochet. And then single crochet in the next two. Now this is in brackets and it says to do that four times. So that will give you 16 stitches. That's our second repeat. Third. And again, that's our fourth repeat. Count your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen stitches. Continue following the instructions, increasing. Now, after we've worked through round eight, per the instructions on round nine, where you start your decrease, it says to single crochet two stitches together. That's how you do a decrease. So you're going to pull up a loop in the next two stitches. You've got three loops on your hook, yarn over and through, and then to single crochet in the next five stitches. Now look again, that's in brackets, and it says to repeat that four times. Two, three, four, five stitches. Then we're going to decrease again. This is our third. Continue in this manner, decreasing stitches per the instructions, and that's what your body's going to look like. We're going to work on the head next. The head is also made in the same manner, beginning with an adjustable loop, working increases, and then decreases. Now this is a tip that's not on the instructions. If you so choose, you can place your eyes on round eight, it's the same amount of stitches. Round 8 has 32 stitches, and by working two single crochet in that first stitch, then single crochet in the next 12, place a marker, then you're going to single crochet in two stitches, do an increase of two single crochet in the next stitch, then single crochet in the next two, place another marker and single crochet in the last 12. So that will take you around and that's on round eight. And then continue following the instructions through the rest of the head. 
Now at this point, I like to stop after I've added a couple of more rows. So you can get to round 10 or round 11 and stop at this point and then go ahead and punch your eyes. And your eyes are like little plastic screws. They have a thread on them. And then there's a plastic bolt that goes on the back to connect them. So I'm going to look at my first marker, pull that out very carefully as I position the eye in there. And with your bolt cover, it's like a little bowl, the larger portion facing the fabric, punch it in place. And we're going to come over to the other. And you can position these however you like. I liked this distance, thought this worked out fairly well. And then continue working on your head, finishing each round. So there we have the head with the eyes punched. All right, now we're going to work on the wings. Again, the wings are made starting the same fashion that we did the head and the body with an adjustable loop, working in rounds, increasing and decreasing. We've completed through round seven, and you're going to fold it in half where your marker is, matching your stitches. Pull that marker out. I'm going to slip stitch through both thicknesses. Can you see your stitches here? Both sides. We're going to slip stitch, then chain four. And then we're going to place our hook into the second chain. Single crochet. And in the next two, we're going to slip stitch. So you're pulling a loop through all the way through. That's a slip. And then we're going to repeat this step. Do this four times. Into your next stitch, we're going to slip stitch through both loops of the front and the back stitches. And then chain four. Single crochet in the second chain. Slip stitch. In the next two. And then repeat. Slip stitch. Then chain four. Single crochet, slip stitch in the next two. Slip stitch, then chain four. Single crochet, slip stitch in the next two. Into your next stitch, slip stitch through both loops of the front and the back stitches. Fasten off. 
and we make two of these. There's our wings. Now we're going to make the legs and the feet. They're connected together. This is the leg portion. Again, you begin it the same way you have with the other pieces, with an adjustable loop, working in continuous rounds. Now before we complete this, you may want to put a little fiber fill in here. You don't have to. That's totally up to you. Open your bag. Fluff it out a little bit. It's very compact. And just pull off a small piece. And you can use the end of your crochet hook to help push it down into the leg. I don't like them too bulky. Now to complete the leg is similar to how we did the wings. We have completed round 20, so we're going to hold the opening together. Matching stitches, we're going to work through both loops, front and back. You can see your stitches, front and back. We're going to chain one and do a half double crochet. So that is yarn over, insert your hook, picking up both front and back. Pull up a loop, yarn over and through all three. Do it again, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and through all three. And that's creating a toe. Then you're going to slip stitch in the next. So working through both thicknesses again. And then half double crochet in the next three. Okay, and then we're going to slip stitch in the next, and then half double crochet in the next two. and slip stitch in that very last one. And there we have our legs and feet. Now we're going to make the beak. Now the beak is started in black. Sometimes black is very difficult to see, so I'm going to begin with a brown yarn. Instead of an adjustable loop, this is going to start with a slip knot on our hook. Chain two. And then we're going to do three single crochet into that second chain. And I'm going to need a marker, so I'm going to use a little piece of the pink. And this can be a little difficult 
because it's so small beginning, and especially when you're working with the black, um, I sometimes have problems seeing the stitches. So we're going to come into that first one, two single crochet, and then single crochet in the next two. So that gives us four stitches. And count them. See, there this is where it's difficult to see, especially with the black. One, two, three, four. This is not a stitch. That's where we started working in the round. So we're going to come over here, place a marker, two single crochet, And my marker fell out. So if you catch that, right here's where it's supposed to be. And then single crochet in the next three. Now you can see it's starting to cup in. I try to turn it out, use your fingers, to let it cup out. All right, we're gonna move the marker again. Two single crochet in that first stitch again. And this one is in brackets. So you're gonna two single crochet, and then you're going to single crochet in the next then we're going to two single crochet single crochet insert your hook into your next stitch now we're ready to add the white. You're going to pick up your new color, the white. Pull your loop through, single crochet. And this is also where the marker goes, but I usually don't put the marker till the next round because I can see that obviously there's a color change. And now we can fasten off the black. Pretend that's black. And continue working with the white two single crochet, single crochet in the next two. And again, continue following the instructions. We get through round 11, and this is what the beak will look like using the actual black. Here are all our pieces, so we're ready for construction. Fill the body with fiber fill. and then you have the remaining fiber fill to be used for the head. Now, like I say, you can stuff your legs if you like before you close them. So just kind of divide it. And I like it to be fairly firm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now if you have a tail on both your body and your head, I have a longer tail on the body piece, so I'm going to use that first. And where I've ended, I try to keep that portion to the back. Match that, holding it, and just stitching. Matching your stitches as you go around. work these through. I'm going to fasten off and I'm going to just make a few stitches with the additional piece of yarn tail that I have from the head. So there's our body. You may want to move your fiber fill around a little bit to make sure the neck is a little more secure. All right, now we're going to attach the wings. And I'm going to take that end and run it through All right, so you want to position this closer to the front of the body, but you can put your wings on there however you like. I come down one, two, three, four, five, six, about round six. And I'm going to run a few stitches through. You just want to tack it on. that there just to make sure I'm happy with the positioning. I can always take it out and move it. All right, so we're going to position the other side, stitch it down. Okay, we have our wings. And now, first thing we're going to do is stitch in the ends from where we made, finished off making the toes. Clip that. Now the legs are sewn on. Need to cut a length of brown. So we're going to position the leg and I like to stitch from the back first. Okay, we're going to come count up about five rounds. One, two, three, four, five. Somewhere between five and six. Place the leg on the back and leave enough of a tail to where we can weave this in. I'm going to tie this off and then I'll weave that in.
so that will stitch it down. Let's see how we're looking. So it will be sitting okay. And then I'm going to just bring this over, position the other leg. We'll have about maybe three stitches between, three to four stitches. Now this is optional. Come up through and create the toes. Again, leaving a yarn tail. And then I'll come over this way. This makes it easy. That way you can use one long piece underneath. Just tie that. Work both ends through and clip them. All right, now we're going to give petals a beak. I would position it right between the eyes, maybe rounds nine through 11, so count them down, but that looks pretty much where I think it needs to be. and I hold it together. You can hold it out like that, but I think holding it together makes it look more like a beak. Stitching the one side, and then we'll come over and pick up the stitches on the opposite side. Alright, now all we have to do is cut four three inch, I'm just guessing here, but cut several and you, you, can, you can use more. For the top fringe, just insert your hook through any stitch, round two, and pull it through. I'll skip. And you can put as much on there as you like. I'm just using four pieces.
And then what we're going to do is trim these down. Take your needle and separate the yarn to fringe it out. a little shake and you can put more on there if you like but that's petals and if you have any questions you can contact us via email help at askacrafter.com I love to crochet